We all train hard. We all then do our high rocks races. The last thing we want to do is spoil our race by doing way too much in that week before them. So in this video, we're gonna go through taper week. So the week leading up to your race, it's a lot of people will mess it up because they'll be scared of reducing their training down. Mm. But that's a real key point of taper week. The, the whole point of that week is so you go into your high rocks race in your peak condition, feeling your best, feeling recovered, feeling alert, feeling prepared. If you've done enough training, then you des you'll need it. Yeah. Coming from, I didn't, we never used to have a day off. <laughs> no, so the, the taper week becomes important, especially, especially when you're not a, a top, top athlete. Top athletes will still taper for stuff. Do they? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But they'll taper for the races they want to perform the best in. Mm. So if they're doing six high rocks races, they're not tapering for all of them. They'll use certain races as practice races. And then they'll have their main ones where they're going to taper for, peak for. So if you're doing, say you did six or seven high rocks races a year, you're not going to take seven weeks out of your training to reduce the volume right down for it. It's, it's too much of a reduction in training. But for us everyday people and for those who are new to doing it, just know you're not going to lose all your fitness by slowing things up or it's not even slowing things up. We're going to go through this by reducing yeah. the volume down. Yeah, so, you can still do it hard, but shorter. And that's exactly how you want to do it. So the whole, <laughs> I've learned, I've learned how, myself. How you'll do it, you're going to reduce the volume. The easiest way to do it is just go, what training have you been doing the week before? Do 50% of that volume. So do all the yeah. training sessions, just reduce them in half. Yeah, because we did at one stage, and we don't do this now, as we're learning and developing ourselves. We did 50% high rock sim, didn't we? A few days, three or four days before. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember doing one. This didn't happen every every one. Oh my God. I thought 50% felt hard and I think I'd overtrained. And then... You'd have overtrained up to that. Up so to if, that, if you're yeah. doing a mixed doubles as a 50% sim four days before, that should oh, be God, fine. I'm, I said that felt that was ridiculous. So I'm going to do the full one. But actually, we didn't train again after that. And by the full one, I did feel loads better, but I didn't like that. Maybe even we did too much that week, but, but I don't know. It's, again, it's the 50% of the volume of what you used yeah. to train in. So if, this is why you'll see other people. They'll be going, oh, on the morning of the race, I'm doing a shakeout run. Oh God, or the night that. before the race, I'm doing a 5K shakeout run. You look at the times they get, you're thinking, what? Oh, that, that. that Kate, 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 Kate Davey. Davey, she did a shakeout run yesterday morning because that's when their race was. And I was like, oh, what about the one that they say? Lactic acid run. No, what's it called? God knows. People people come up with names for for all sorts. Lactic. Oh. Lactic flush. That's... So yeah, dude, your lactic flush. We've run. never done a lactic flush. No. But but, but if we say in a year's time because we've learned that we should do one, we'll let you know. Well, it's, it's just doing an easier run beforehand. So yeah. that's that's all you're doing. But it's making sure that that easy run is easy, and you're not doing it going. Oh, that was that ended up being a hard training session because you end up pushing yourself because you're scared of losing your fitness. So the number one thing to start off with is plan your taper week. Yeah. Know how you're going to do it. Mm. So for most people, it's going to be probably nothing the day before and the day before that, apart from like light movement, stretching, yoga, maybe a bit of biking, something simple. Yeah. The training sessions prior to that, yeah, you can still do some interval work. You can still do some high rock specific work. You're just going to do a lot less of the volume. So they're going to be short, sharp sessions, more like half hour long sessions. Get in, get them done, get out, job done. So plan that week. Know how you're going to do it. So number two is, is that. It's reducing the volume, which we've already said about. And that is what's key. So make sure you're reducing that volume down, but keeping the intensity up. And really do resist that temptation to push it hard. You'd have been in push it hard mode for quite a while. And then you've got your race coming up. So you want to be in that headspace going, I want to keep pushing it hard. It, it won't do you any good. You'll get to race day and you're just going to find it harder and harder. You want to have rested enough. So you're feeling, yeah, I'm itching to go. I'm raring to go. I feel really prepared for it. I'm probably fueling enough then. Well, that's what we'll come to when it comes to another important thing to do is rest and recovery. And a big part of that recovery is going to be nutrition. I eat loads. 
So it's have it's have change your focus. You know, if you normally go, oh, I'm spend I normally spend five hours a week training. It's then going right. What can you spend five hours a week doing that's going to really help you? Planning your food, prepping your food, hydration. Look at everything you can get in recovery, stretching, movement, and make sure you don't do anything new. Do stuff you've done before. You don't want to be introducing some new crazy workouts in that week. Why not? Because you're going to get sore. You s- I want to do, I don't know, a weight session. You can still, oh, you can still do. right, you could still do weight sessions. You still want to maintain your strength. I know, but could you... I but you wouldn't do deadlifts if you haven't no. done deadlifts for ages. Imagine the doms. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want to be doing anything when you're going to be getting any doms. So no slow no, eccentric stuff, no high volume stuff, no, no new exercises that no. you've seen on Instagram. You still want to maintain your cardiovascular fitness. So that's where you're still going to do some of that. But it's easy to maintain something. Yeah. You have to work harder to develop, but it's easy to maintain. So that's why this week it's work hard, short amounts, maintain what you're doing. Yeah. So a, another part of that, um, making sure you're rested up and ready to go is use active rest. Go out, do some more walks. Do do a little bit of biking, if you find, but easy. Do some swimming if you find swimming relaxing and good movements. So picking things where you go, yeah, this is this is all right. I feel good doing it. You, what you don't want to do is go, right, I'm in tape a week. I'm not doing anything. And then you have a week. You just, you're going to start that race feeling sluggish and tired. And That sounds like the dream. <laughs> you can do that the week after. If you want to have a rest, have a, have a rest the week after. I wouldn't, I used to go swimming, but I wouldn't go swimming because I'll end up getting doms in my arms and all sorts. Well, I wouldn't go swimming. It's the hardest no. thing I could possibly do because I'm terrible at swimming. You are so, honestly, I wish we could talk about your swimming. Yeah, we don't need to talk about my swimming. Won't. Yeah, there's loads. We walk, don't we? do lots of walking. Yeah, and really, really think about food. Stretching, breathing, slower. Yeah, really <laughs> plan your food out. Yeah. Spend a bit more t- t- planning your food out. If you normally spend your time training, use that time to go, right, I'm going to plan what I'm having, really eat wholesome, good foods, get your body ready. Yeah. Think about hydration. Hydration and nutrition isn't just what you do on the morning of your race or the night before. It's that build up to it. Have your body in that optimal position. You've done all the hard work where you're training for it. Now it comes, that then becomes the more important part of it. The other thing to really start shifting is your mindset. You really want to make sure you stay with a positive mindset going into this week and picture yourself doing the race. Oh, I do that. But in a good way. (laughs) No, I do. I do it and have all sorts of outcomes. So that's my way of preparing though. Like that tell me went wrong. Yeah, yours is. Yeah, because then you know how to react because you've already been in that situation in your head. You don't really want to be sitting there thinking about everything that can go wrong. No, I I don't do that. You want to be thinking you crossing the finishing line. Yeah, know it, knowing it's going to be hard. Yeah, knowing that feeling when you're finished and feeling good for it and going, yeah, I've really accomplished and something. And all, all the way around, I'm thinking of what I'm eating after. That That's gets what me. gets you through it, yeah. doesn't it? Even the week leading to it. Not that I'm being careful with food or anything like that, but it's a good, it's good to think, oh, I'll have that no, burger. But yeah, when you're trying to eat well and you're doing well and you're prepping your body and then you're not eating cheeseburger and chips... It's not a bad thing for you to then go, right, I booked the restaurant for where I'm eating that night after the race and we're having a big fat cheeseburger and chips. What do we usually and I'm going to enjoy after? it. We've had a wagon moment. We've had all sorts afterwards. But only because it was nearest to us. It's not my top of my list to eat. No, it wasn't great either. No, it wasn't great. It's that normally was... Nan- Nando's before Before it, we always have Nando's. But without the chips now, like we did at the beginning. I know. Honestly, right. <laughs> Let me just quickly tell them we're watching at the time. So basically, when we did the first couple of events... Uh, we went to Nando's and had chips. I had an Easter egg, a whole Easter egg. Do you remember the night before? Fueling. And then I learned the carb old... loading, but yeah, not the best. But way anyway, to we do don't do all that. And then I look forward to it after it. So I can't even remember where we go, but we do have nice food after. Oh, we've done a Thai before. It wasn't the best restaurant there either. I think we had just had a uh, what's it called when you phone up for your food. Uh, but the Uber oh, one or whatever. We, did. we had a five guys. Oh, that was so good. We got back to the hotel and we right. were exhausted, weren't we? Right. So the issue I have, and I've told Steve that I'm not pushing it. When I push myself, because we want to get the best time in Manchester and we got it an hour and 10. Afterwards, though, my stomach's wishy-washy. And that's when I know I've pushed myself too hard. I feel ill. I don't know if anyone else knows what I'm going on about. So we did get five guys and I'm eating it, knowing that I want it, but my belly's like, wish it's just... Saying not to. Yeah. Oh, I love that five guys. Yeah, but you had it. You felt ill after. We're yeah, because right. pushed yourself not... so hard. It's, pushed... Again, it depends how hard you're pushing yourself and... Tell us your stories. We want to hear more stories. We might have to put this on our Instagram. Yeah, I get want to hear about how there. people feel after they've had up to the high rocks. We'll, we'll push ourselves... 
to the max. And Yeah, but I'm not doing that anymore. I've learned the hard way. Yeah. The other thing to use <laughs> tape a week for is just to make sure you're prepared for your race. Clothes. So you've got some extra time. Yeah. Pack. Again, look, look at the uh, race plan. Look at stuff. Make sure you've took everything. You've got everything with you. You know you're prepared. Yeah. Have that list. Go through it. Get ready. So you know on the day you're all ready and ready to go. So No panic. Fill your time where you're not training with something else. So you're not thinking, oh, I should be training. Yeah. And again, just to, just the final thing that I'm going to finish on is with your training, if you reduce it by 50% of the volume that you're doing and then make it easier for the last two days, easy to nothing for most people, apart from a little bit of movement, that is your taper week training. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. The other thing that I'll just say is the more you do it, the more you'll find out what works best for you. So you might go, actually, I could have done a little bit more or I felt a little bit sluggish or I could have done a little bit less or don't eat a pizza from the hotel the night before she then feel terrible when you oh, then do you. the race. Yeah, that, that was stupid. You said you were going to share it. That was London Olympia. Ruined it. Oh my God. You no, I don't Ill. like waste. So I ate it all. <laughs> and then, you know, when you go, oh, that wasn't London Olympia, that was Birmingham. Oh, was it? Because we were at the Moxie Hotel. Oh, yeah. That's went we down going. to eat something and thought, oh, there isn't much on here. That Couldn't cheesy, be bothered to go somewhere it was else. the cheesiest, to... thickest, oh, fattest pizza. Don't do that. And you was ill. Not ill as in just like... No, it was just... It's, the, it's the worst preparation you can have for a race. Yeah. Don't do daft things. Try and eat similar to what you'd normally eat. That's, yeah, top do, tip. Do, don't spoil... Do daft don't, things. Don't do daft things. Don't spoil things for you. Yeah, think about the pizza after. Yeah, if you normally have porridge in the morning, maybe take some porridge with you if you stay in yeah, the hotel. Yeah, they're easy to get, aren't they? So yeah, keep keep it simple. So yeah, hopefully that helps for anybody who's got a race coming up. And that is how to do your taper week.